everybody, we've taken a break from making videos for a little bit. We haven't stopped cooking. And I posted the other day a, a picture of um, a Czech favorite that we like here in Texas. I'm not sure I can say it right, but klobashniki or klobashnik. Klobashniki is um, plural. So um, you start out, it's a bread, it's a sweet bread with sausage in the center. And um, this recipe is from Chrissy Lofton who is a friend of our family. Um, so you start out with Chrissy's recipe by um, scalding uh, milk and uh, you, you, you just heat the milk until it starts to boil and then you can take the protein off the top of the milk as it starts to cool. You add sugar, salt, and butter, which is what this is to the hot milk. And um, you stir that up until it dissolves. And that's the first step. <clears throat> and then we're just gonna set this to the side, especially once we get the sugar dissolved. And we're gonna let that milk, um, I'm sorry, milk, that hot milk, melt the butter. And uh, that way it won't be too hot for our yeast, which we're gonna work on next. So we'll come back with that as soon as we get this dissolved. And uh, we'll move on to uh, talking about yeast. So for the yeast, we want water that's between 110 and 120 degrees. And we're gonna put that in a large bowl. I'm gonna use the mixing bowl because we're gonna use that, our big mixer here in a minute. And two packages of active dry yeast. If you look in the directions, you'll see that you can also use instant yeast. Just use a different quantity. And we're gonna put this in, and the thing to do with this yeast First thing is to just make sure it's good and dissolved. So stir it until it's nice and dissolved. It takes just a few minutes once you get started. You can see here that we've got our sugar, butter, and um, milk mixture with a little salt. And we have two eggs that have already been beaten. So we're gonna activate this yeast with water. And um, as soon as that's good and dissolved, we're going to add the sugar mixture um, and the, with the milk and we just want to make sure it's not too warm because if it's too hot, we'll kill the yeast and it's fine. Um, so you just want to make sure that that's cooled down enough. You want the butter melted, but you don't want it so, um, you don't want it so um, hot that you, you uh, kill the yeast. So we'll pour that in, then we're going to pour in and just stir that, the two eggs. There we go. We'll stir that by hand until blended, which is pretty easy to do. And if you want to show them that. And then the next thing we're going to do is sift in half of the flour. The recipe calls for four and a half cups of flour. Um, and if you know anything about making bread, just depending on the, the day you make it, um, it can change. So it's not an exact science, but we'll start with one cup. Uh, and I like to sift it just to make sure we don't have any lumps that we're dealing with. So we'll, we'll put half of it in to begin with. We'll go ahead and pull this spoon out for now. Just one cup, but we'll put uh, two in a a little bit extra, two and a quarter cups in there. Be fine. There's one. one more. Here's two. And then uh, we'll put a little bit more just to get started because I know that we'll, we'll certainly need more than two and a half. We'll need at least four. To four and a half and probably more. I usually end up usually end up with more. So it's about two and a half cups to get started. And we're going to uh, I like to just stir it just a little bit. Um, and the reason I'm stirring it is if you have a, a KitchenAid mixer, if you're going to do this on a mixer, and I'm going to, um, you you will want to uh, do that because if you don't. Um, you can start, it, it, it can get flour everywhere when you first start it. We're going to start with our paddle mixer um, attachment on our mixer and just on low. 
and we're just going to mix that first amount of um, flour until it's, it's well, well blended. We don't want to overbeat um, this at all, but uh, just until it's well blended. Then we'll slowly add the rest of the flour. But as we do that, what we're going to change over to the dough hook because it, it will start to get stiff. So you can look at this and you can see that it's starting to get well uh, blended. There's still a little flour on the sides, um, but that's okay. So we're gonna stop it. And I don't know any better way to do this. Um, so we're just gonna stop it and raise it. And we'll, we'll add um, most of the other two cups that's remaining. That's about half of it. So we'll stop there. Mm. We'll turn it on low. Maybe we didn't kick up a big cloud. We'll let this get incorporated. It'll start to get shaggy fast. You can see this. Um, we'll let that get incorporated. I'm going to go ahead and put the, the rest of the, of the dough in there. We want kind of a shaggy dough to begin with. And then uh, we'll continue. So I think that's good enough. We can probably go ahead and mix in the rest. Okay, so this is the last of our two cups. It is starting to kick a little bit out there. Let it mix. You can see that it is getting stiff right away. So I'm going to stop and clean this off. And we're going to switch to the dough hook. And we'll do the dough hook, we'll get it mixed. We'll scrape down the bowl. And uh, then we're going to let it run uh, to knead the dough. You could, if you don't have a, uh, a KitchenAid mixer, um, you could at this, after you get it mixed well, um, you, you can turn it out onto a floured um, surface and you could knead it for eight to 10 minutes um, or we could just let the machine do it. Okay, so I'm switching over to the dough hook now because our dough did get stiff. We want it to be um, sticky and elastic, but uh, not dry. So we'll need to go ahead, if you, if you have, like I said, a mixer like this, you wanna lock the top and put it on probably about two to three. And um, we'll have to let this continue mixing. I did scrape down the bowl when I switched to the dough hook, um, but we'll let this go. It's, if you look at it here, um, this is probably okay, but we, we may need a little bit more flour. So if you wanna show them what that looks like, um, Luke, you can see that it's, it's doing okay. It's, it's a little bit uh, too sticky and probably not quite dry enough. We'll let it mix for a few more minutes and then we'll put some more flour. So the dough has been um, kneaded by the mixture mixer now for about 10 minutes and it's very elasticy now, as you can see. It's very elasticy. We're just gonna pull it off the hook and out of this bowl and uh, it'll come right off just like that like a big rubber band. We'll take the bowl out, and then all we're gonna do, I'll scrape it, but uh, we're gonna take the dough and um, turn it out into a bowl that I have, whew, that I have, my goodness, I've made a mess. Kinda sticky. It probably could have had a little bit more flour, but it'll be fine. Uh, we're just gonna let it sit here and rise. I'm gonna pull the rest of this dough out of the bowl and um, we're gonna cover this. Either you can, with a little saran wrap or a, a damp towel, and we're gonna let it rise for about one hour. And sometimes I'll spray just a, a, a little bit of cooking sprayer on the top to keep it from sticking to anything while it's rising. So we'll be back in about one hour. It's been about an hour, 45 minutes, something like that. I'm gonna see how our bread is doing. If you'll come over, we'll uh, poke it and see if it's done rising. If it uh, leaves a dent after we poke, after a minute or so, then you know that it's done rising. If it springs back instantly, you know that it's um, it's not. So that, that poke stayed. And so <clears throat> we can turn it out. If it's, if it's risen too far, you can let it poke, you can knock it down and let it rise again, but I'm not gonna do that. We're gonna put a little, 
on a floured surface here and uh, knead it just a little bit, make it a little bit easier to deal with and uh, work just a little bit more flour into it. Isn't that great? You can see how it changed just with a little bit of time. It is still very elastic dough. When? Okay, so the easiest way to do this is to roll the dough out into kind of a log like that. And then we're gonna cut it into five equal length pieces. One, two, three, four, and five. So that's pretty good. And then we're gonna take each one of those and we're gonna cut those into fours. So one, two, and three, four. And then one, two, three, four. And then, so after you've cut it into 20 equal sized pieces, you may need a little flour on your hands, but uh, make each one of these little pieces of dough uh, into a rectangle. Place one piece of cheese and one um, piece of sausage. The sausage I like to cut into half on this particular size, this Eckridge sausage, and then put it in the middle. And uh, you need to dry that sausage off um, before you get started. You can cut that sausage and the cheese uh, while you're waiting on your t uh, bread to, to um, your dough to rise. Then put them in a grease pan. Uh, you can put them on a cookie sheet. I'm gonna put them in this because I'm gonna cover these up overnight. We're gonna try to refrigerate it. I've never done that before. So we don't have to get up two hours before breakfast to cook tomorrow. And uh, we just go through the process over and over like that. It's a little bit labor intensive. You can put two pieces of cheese if you have enough in your particular piece of dough, but just mash that seam on the ends, on the top, roll it down. And when you put them in the pan, you want them close, but not quite touching because they're gonna rise one more time uh, in the morning. And, uh, and then of course, right as they're cooking. So they'll rise a little bit both, both times. So again, just pull that into uh, a square or a, um, a rectangle, pinch it shut, and that makes a really nice size. You can roll it just a little bit, flatten it, and uh, your klobasnik, klobasnik will be terrific. And one or two pieces of cheese and a piece of sausage that's about the same length. Pinch it shut. Kind of fold your pinch under. And I like to put that seam down, just like that. So we'll do that until we've used up all of our dough. And um, then we're gonna just cover it with a piece of saran wrap or a foil and put them in the refrigerator overnight. The reason we dry the sausage off is you don't want your bread to be mushy in the middle. They'll, they'll be mushy a little bit because uh, it makes a little cavity inside there um, where the sausage has a little bit of grease um, like all sausages and that sausage will you know make the bread a little bit moist there but we don't want to, uh, to add to it so we want to dry that sausage off and you can see these are pretty dry. So when I went and got the bread out of the oven, this, um, out of the fridge this morning, it had risen, risen quite a bit. And so um, we're gonna go ahead and cook it. We're gonna brush the tops with a little butter and put them in for say 20 minutes until they get nice and brown. And so there you got it. They came out fine. They're a little bigger than I've ever made them, a little puffier, but there's nothing wrong with puffy bread. Um, it took about seven, six or seven minutes longer to cook than usual. I'm sure that was because everything was cold, including the stoneware that they're cooking in. But um, they look delicious and uh, they smell great. So we're gonna eat and uh, you guys have a great day.